a passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver. Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Dr. Kevin Show, where we challenge everything and everyone here on Ohm Times Radio, where we're changing the world one ohm at a time. So first of all, I want to welcome everybody and for all my new listeners and to remind the old listeners, now that wasn't a comment about your age, uh, you can come to... Uh, facebook.com backslash my doctor kevin m y d r k e v i n and when you do that you will see uh the listing of today's guest uh you'll get the description you will also get a link where you can click and link over to them to him and you can be part of today's conversation you get to be part of today's conversation because if you comment while we are live on the air we share your comment with all of our listeners so this is your opportunity to be heard. It's your opportunity to ask my guest questions, to ask me questions. This is your opportunity to stand up, be noticed, and make a difference. Remember, the, the world is not going to go to, as I like to say, hell in a handbasket because of all of the crazy conservatives or all the crazy liberals, but it's going to be the apathetic that kill this kills humanity and this planet. The large numbers of people who just simply do nothing and just wander around going, bah, like the sheeple they are, not thinking things through, not making decisions on their own, or frankly, not caring. So care. Today's your day to care. Today's your day to ask a question to someone that you will never, may never have a chance to ask again, meaning my guest. Participate. Make a difference. Be heard. It's your time to stand up and speak out. So... Now we're going to go to our hot topic. For those of you who are new, when we do my hot topic, it's either something that makes me warm and fuzzy or makes me hot under the collar. Some of you may have made a bet on that my hot topic today was going to have to do with recent events, and you would win. And it is a hot under the collar. Yes, I'm going to talk about Orlando. I'm actually speaking later tonight um, on Orlando, a spiritual perspective, and it will be uh, and it will be live on the Facebook.com backslash my Dr. Kevin. So come to my Facebook fan page if you would like to hear a spiritual perspective of Orlando. What I am going to say right now is the most disturbing thing out there in this moment of this tragedy cycle is how many politicians are trying to win points trying to point fingers. You, it's your fault. It's your fault. McCain is blaming Obama. Obama is blaming the Republicans. The Republicans are blaming ISIS. ISIS is glad to take credit because it makes them look bigger and badder than they actually are. There's a lot of question about whether this was even an ISIS motivated thing. I've heard all of the theories, uh, well, probably not all of them, but they're all out there. Everything from that this was a frustrated homophobic homosexual who had a homophobic father um, and a uh, very uh, uh, religious system with a um, very dim view of homosexuality to the fact that he beat his wife uh, and that he was considered mentally unstable. Well, I think mentally unstable probably is the one that we know we can be a, put a big check mark in front of as the truth. Because anybody that goes around killing bunches of people that they don't know in the name of anybody hits my mentally unstable uh, checklist right off the bat. So we know that it's a given fact that they're a little uh, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, so to speak, uh, and they can't be treated like a sane person. But, of course, some of the question is, do we need to assign blame? And if we do, who do we assign it for? Or what do we need to look at? Even a better question is, what do we need to change? Because this is just another and a series, a series of incidences. Now, it's very interesting. Those people who want to downplay it have said, well, they say it's the largest 
you know, foreign attack, terrorist attack on, on American soil since 9-11 or blah, blah, blah. And then somebody else posts that, well, there was the massacre in Tucson where all those Native Americans got killed. Well, then that means that the U.S. government would be qualified as a terrorist cell. Now, I'm not saying that I'm sure that they're wrong. Um, in fact, I, I think that there might be some, some, good, some good evidence that the U.S. government is a terrorist cell, at least in the, uh, in the eyes of the Native American people. Uh, but people keep on missing the important part, which is how do we change it? We can't bring back their lives. Fifty people are dead. And, and, and hundreds, if not thousands of people, have been the first or second circle affected by these deaths. And the ones that survived will be traumatized for the rest of their life. So they, too, are affected, and everybody that loves them and supports them. So the question is, what do we do? Where do we look at? So in just a minute, I'm going to bring in my guest. I'm going to toss this question to him. Where does he think that we need to look at? What does he think we need to do, and what do we need to change? I will only say one thing in this moment, and you can tune in later on my Facebook page if you'd like to hear more. I will say that as long as we preach and teach hate from pulpits and classrooms and out of the mouths of politicians, then we are going to have things like this on the rise. Today's guest is part of the series I'm doing about young entrepreneurs, all these young people that are proving the this statement wrong about, you know, the younger generation, the late teens, the early 20-somethings. What are they doing? Well, they're probably mostly making us look like fools, and they should. This particular one is uh, this particular entrepreneur, George Beal. George is a startup founder, investor, and advisor. He is currently one of the co-founders of Everpedia. Now, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not, but I'm sure I, he has full permission to uh, correct me. Uh, the w w Wikipedia built for the modern internet. You can find out more about him at www.everpedia.com backslash George Beal 73. George, are you there? Yes. Uh, hello. Thank you for having me. You're, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you on. And so we have about five minutes. So what do you think about Orlando and what can we do to make change? What do you think? So I definitely think that there needs to be some new regulation for guns. Uh, although I think largely what has been said so far is not necessarily going in the right direction. So a lot of people have said that we need to ban the AR-15, which is the most common uh, assault weapon. And it was the, the weapon used in Orlando. But what a lot of people don't understand is that the AR-15 is semi-automatic just like a majority of other weapons in the United States that are sold today. Uh, so realistically, the term assault weapon sort of falls into this category of political jargon that was invented purely for, you know, boosting points and uh, getting people driven up. Um, so I think realistically, if you ban the AR-15, you would just see more shootings happening with either pistols or long rifles. Uh, so realistically, we just need to institute similar sort of precautions that we have for, say, driving a car. I think in order to have a rep weapon, you should go through weapons training that then if you pass, you can then get a license. And then there's registration of weapons uh, that goes through the government. So we know everybody's up to date with training, everybody's licensed and all weapons are accounted for. Now, I've got a question because I'm not per se a gun person. I've gone out shooting yeah. a few times. Mm -hmm. I, I did the NRA certification as a safety hunter uh, well before you were born, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, but does this, does this uh, weapon, because yeah. my impression, the AR-15, mm -hmm. is that you could shoot... Um, very rapidly a number of bullets without stopping. Is that not true? Uh, I guess it depends on, you know, what you're defining as a large number of bullets. So I guess the, the breakdown and where a lot of confusion comes from is so the, the stereotypical machine gun 
uh, the M4 that's used standard issue in the U.S. military. That's fully automatic. That gun can shoot about 1,500 bullets in one minute. Uh, the AR-15 is semi-automatic, so you have to pull the trigger each time to shoot a bullet. But you don't have to reload or cock the gun or anything like that. So with all standard issue semi-automatic guns, pretty much if you're pulling as fast as you can, you can shoot about 60 bullets in a minute. Uh, but that also means that you would have to reload. So the typical AR-15 only holds about 15, maybe 30 bullets in a magazine, depending on the state you're in. So at that point, you have to reload. But you can still shoot just as quickly with that as you can with a long rifle, as you can with a shotgun, as you can with a pistol. Um, and in fact, with the Virginia Tech shooting, uh, the shooter there used a regular pistol and just had 19 magazines preloaded in a backpack, and he shot off 170 bullets before the police uh, detained him. So realistically, there is no difference between shooting power, the amount of bullets you can get off or whatever, between the AR-15 and other similar assault weapons, uh, as with all other guns that you know most people wouldn't necessarily consider lethal and the cause of mass shooting. Well, you know, I, I think that we probably agree more than we disagree. And by not being a gun person, uh, thank you much. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you much, Lee, because I, you know, did not have that distinction in my head because I really haven't focused on the gun per se. I, I've more, well, obviously, I've, uh, as I've stated, I've focused more on why have we created this environment, Yeah, uh, which is a key thing. But also that... Um, you know, what happens is both sides win as long as they keep it in a stalemate that it's a black and white. All guns, no guns. And that's what keeps it in play. There's the sound of the music. We'll be back in a moment with George Beale, who is the founder of Everpedia. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Join Vibe Nation radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcott, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners and give a message from spirit about the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, join Carrie each Monday at 3 p.m. on Vibe Nation Radio. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Hello, 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 and welcome back to 
uh, the Dr. Kevin Show, where we're challenging everything and everyone here on Ohm Times Radio, where we're changing the world. Wait for it. One Ohm at a time. So if you want to be part of this conversation, I, I have George Beal with me today, who is an impressive, I'm going to say an impressive young man that has, he's been a startup founder, an investor, an advisor, um, and he has an awful lot of wisdom. Some of it, the, you know, those of us who are in the woo-woo business would say that he probably brought it forward from past lives. Um, others of us who are in the uh, ADD, ADHD business would probably say he was just born brilliant. Um, and there's probably some truth. George, what do you say? What's your excuse for being so successful so young? Uh, well, I think I have to really credit my mother with a lot of this. Uh, she did a really good job of making sure that my brothers and I were well-versed. So I was going to art museums and traveling a lot from a very young age. And she also made sure that we got into business from a young age. So I can remember being, what, about seven years old and hustling Boy Scout popcorn door to door. And I think I would do about $2,000 of sales each year. So, so yeah, I mean, I have, to, I have to credit everything I've done to her. Well, and you know, and I'm going to point something out here, which is, and then we're going to move into our, uh, our first George-centered segment. And you can find out more about George at everpedia.com backslash George Beal 73. Uh, and there are two L's on that. Or you can just come to Facebook.com backslash my Dr. Kevin. Ask your questions and just click the link and it will take you to George's smiling face. Um, George, you know what? They always say you can't make um, a silk purse out of a sow's ear. And so I think it's fabulous that you recognize that your mother was very instrumental in the nurturing of you to be your best. But she also had to have some really good material to work with. So make sure that you keep that in mind. Very true. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you know, um, I, I think that it is it, it is a disservice for people both to be too proud and too modest. Uh, you inspire and give people hope by being um, aware and acknowledging your accomplishments uh, as much as having them. So now, George, this is the outside the box part of my show. So where would you like to take my listeners outside the box? Where do you want to stretch their comfort zones? Where do you want to expand their minds? Well, I think especially with this younger generation, a lot of people are very eager to get into entrepreneurship, get out there and do things in the world uh, and make a difference. And I think realistically, what a lot of people should just keep in mind is that there are no barriers to keep you from doing things. Uh, and as long as you have a good plan and you actually go out and execute, you can do whatever you want. Uh, and I think that's realistically the the one hang up with a lot of things. So I dropped out of a pretty prestigious college uh, in order to start my first company. And whenever I would talk to people about dropping out, the biggest thing people would ask was either number one, uh, you know, should I drop out? And uh, then also the other thing was, you know, how do I get an idea to drop out for? And from all of my friends that have also dropped out for companies and overall, a lot of entrepreneurs I've talked with, I think people are either too eager or too hesitant to drop out. Uh, when you approach these types of companies or ideas, ambitions, whatnot, I think if you have a good idea, you should run with it. And you shouldn't necessarily favor one life path over the other, whether that be going to college or dropping out of college. So, well, it's very interesting. And I don't know, because we, we, you know, you belong to an organization and several people um, from that organization have been interviewed on my show. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if uh, you're aware or not, but one of my... Um, areas of expertise actually is working with ADD and ADHD. And I have uh, a lot of books out on it and I've been working with it for a long time. And I bring that up because I work with it as part of the, that it is, uh, that ADD is not a disability, but it's actually broadening the bandwidth of humanity. Mm -hmm. And so I tag that in now because first of all, ADD individuals are 400% more likely to become entrepreneurs. 
they don't do well in traditional learning situations. They don't do well studying lots of minutia until they find the piece of gold. They just have to dive for the gold. And then when they have the goal, they run so fast and so far with it that it makes people, you know, head spin. Mm -hmm. And so from this, I think it's very interesting that there is no wrong choice. But as far as do I drop out of college? Well, what are you going to do if you do? What do you have in place? Um, if if you have a solution to a problem and you think you can run with it and you're willing to work three times harder than you've ever worked, how much of this was you just sitting back like, you know, like eating bonbons and playing video games, George? Uh, very little, very little. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've, I've had my own business for 26 years. Uh you never work so hard, but you also never work so joyful if it's the right business. Very true. So um, I think that's interesting. Uh, you need to determine. You, the individual, need to determine what is um, what calls you. Not everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur, and certainly not everybody is meant to go to college. Now, you dropped out of the Wharton School of Business at the University of Pennsylvania, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, now, you left a school of business to create a multi-million dollar company, correct? Uh, yeah. Now, have you ever thought of going back to take more classes that, that there may be holes that by jumping that you did? Or have you figured that you have learned it all on the fly? Or are you more drawn to work with mentors and people that are out there doing it? So I, I definitely enjoyed my time at Wharton, and I do think that there is a lot to be learned from a college education. Uh, I mean, and especially I think certain disciplines and industries lend themselves to requiring that sort of education. So for example, if I ever wanted to work in venture capital, more than likely I would need to at least take some classes or pick up more knowledge on venture capital, because a lot of stuff that goes into fund structure, how you choose and weigh different funds and choices, et cetera, all is a very good science and very, very technical. Uh, so I think a lot of that, you know, there's no use reinventing the wheel. It's better to just learn the standard practices. But I do think that especially from my experiences and just what I enjoy doing, I've I've had a good experience with business for a while. I started my first company when I was a freshman in high school. So a lot of what was going into entrepreneurship, I already had exposure to, and I was just very eager to get out and do things. So that was a lot of what really led to my decision to leave, especially I already had my company started during my first semester as a freshman. So I had already been working on my company for over a semester while I was at college and my MBA professor that was advising me even told me this is a very good opportunity you should leave school so overall it was a very stable rational decision to leave and I don't regret making it no and and some of the mutual people we know I've I've actually said and why would you go to college like why why would yeah. you go to college? Because are you going to college because you're supposed to or because your parents think you're supposed to or whatever? Um, you know, there are some things like you're, you said, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. But if you access it right, so much of the information that you need, you can do with a little bit of discipline and a lot of self-study and then a couple of mentors and not be forced to take things which have no application for you. Yeah, that's very true. Um, so I guess the, the one thing I will throw in is that I think a lot of people could do even better by going to college. I, I'm not a proponent of dropping out. I'm not a proponent of going to school. I think realistically, every person just sort of has a path that they should follow and they shouldn't necessarily be leaning towards more like one set path based on any sort of societal values, whether it be dropping out is cool or having a college degree is safe. And so, you know, for example, if you want to start a hardware tech company, unless you're just brilliant and you understand hardware engineering, you need to go get an engineering degree and understand electrical engineering. And I think a lot of people either 
jump at opportunities prematurely and don't have enough of the the background or foundation to really understand the ins and outs of that opportunity. And additionally, I think if you actually got that background, you might even come up with even better opportunities. So I think overall, you know, when you're in college age and the amount of knowledge you have just from a high school degree, you might not have enough resources to really understand what you could do. And so I think if you actually get something going, you enjoy it, it's a really good opportunity, you should run with that opportunity. But besides that, I wouldn't necessarily say drop out or go to school. Just sort of follow whatever path is like most fulfilling for you and gather the amount of resources you need before you actually jump into a venture of your own. Well, and I, again, you know, one of the things that you pointed out is, A, it depends on what you want to do, because I wouldn't encourage somebody to necessarily just kind of figure it out as you go and jump into being a heart surgeon. A mm-hmm. um, little risky there, especially for the patients. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but there are some things that that... Some people just learn better kinesthetic. Some people would would learn better if they said to you, George, can I would you mentor me for a year? Could I just follow you around? Could I just be could I just absorb and watch what you do and then run with my idea, which is completely different? And that's how I learn. I learn kinesthetically. I'm not gonna learn it in the classroom. On the other hand, some people, the classroom is the perfect place. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And I mean, I definitely I'm a a big proponent of education in general, whatever sort of facet that may take. Uh, And I guess realistically, my big point is I think a lot of people sort of have a very idealized view of entrepreneurship and, you know, going out on your own and taking control of your life. And they see, you know, these examples like the social network or the multiple Steve Jobs movies. And overall, they have this amazing viewpoint of what entrepreneurship is like, but they don't have the resources behind them or the background and foundation to do it correctly. And here comes our music, and we'll be right back with George. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Join Vibe Nation Radio host, international psychic medium, Carrie Turcott, as she guides her listeners to rediscover themselves by accessing the keys of knowledge that already exist within. Each week's show is divinely orchestrated to intertwine with the universal energies, allowing the listeners to go deeper within. At the end of each show, Carrie will tap into the energies of the listeners and give a message from Spirit about the upcoming week. If you really want to get to know who you truly are, join Carrie each Monday at 3 p.m. on Vibe Nation Radio. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Medium Lisa Phoenix, Mediumship Messages and Musings, explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. 
She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your host on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show where we challenge everything and everyone here on Ohm Times, where we're changing the world one Ohm at a time. If you want to be part of this conversation uh, today, come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin, M-Y-D-R-K-E-V-I-N. If you are listening to this on one of the replays on the podcast or what the places, the, the, I have a number of places that replay my shows, uh, you can still come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin, even though the show's not live. You can look up today's guest, George Beal, uh, on my timeline, and you can still ask questions. And if I can't answer the questions, then I will hunt George down and see if he will answer them. George, are you willing to do that? Sounds good. Great. That way, you see, that way I don't have to chase him down, pick him up at the ankles, and shake the answers out of him. It's better uh-huh. for volunteers. Uh, <laughs> George left school to work on his startup Touch Tiles. Uh, touch tile. It says touch tiles in my write up I have in front of me, but I want to say is that called the touch tile company, touch tiles, which made yeah. completely customizable smart devices. And then you ended up selling it in 2016. Uh, you can find out more about him at everpedia.com backslash George Beale 73 backslash. So this part of the, my show starts with a quiz you have to see if you can pass the quiz to pass into the rest of the show are you ready george okay okay so from what movie came this line ignore the man behind the curtain uh the wizard of oz good job um you know because what happened is that you had somebody that was saying that they were the great and powerful oz and what they really were were a shyster from kansas who's who couldn't fly their balloon. Uh, And it took a dog to uncover the truth. Today, we have a lot of people that want to be great and powerful, and it's not really the truth. We want to be given a lot of things and told them as if they're absolutely true, and they're not. We basically get more snow jobs than the Antarctica gets snow. So, George, what truth would you like to share with my listeners today that they may not be aware of that if they understood this truth would change their lives? Well, I think the biggest thing that people really need to understand in this modern society is that there are a lot of people who lie. And I have succumbed to this, and a lot of people I know have succumbed to this. And unless you really do your due diligence when you first meet people, you know, make them back up their claims, do research, and really find out if what they're saying is true beyond a reasonable doubt, uh, you're probably going to end up believing some lies and some fictions that are told by people. Uh, And there's a lot of people out there. I've noticed it a lot. And realistically, unless you actually call people out on what they claim, you're going to meet a lot of fakers. Uh, Yeah. So, I mean, I think the best advice for really succeeding in this modern age where a lot of people do lie is look towards work. You know, if someone says, I'll do X, Y, and Z for you, you know, I'm going to make you famous. Wait until they do X, Y, and Z to start giving them praises and maybe rewarding them. Um, Yeah. So I have a couple of different places I want to go with this conversation. Very interesting. And I do think that um, young entrepreneurs are a little more susceptible sometimes to the, um, the, the smoke and mirror stardust promises when they first get started. Um, a, yeah, and A, because somebody believes in them. 
And a lot of times these same kids were actually almost being punished for being too bright or too inventive or too outside the box because that's not encouraged in public education for the most part. Mm -hmm. So you have somebody who suddenly you think you think they get my dream. They get me. They get me. Sure. What do you want me to do? Write your check. No problem. Um, so I absolutely agree. And I think, again, there's that vulnerability. But I do want to caution people that there are two or three things to keep in mind. A, if, you, if you're not on first name basis with your own gut instincts and your own intuitive, then make sure you get there. Because you will get a sense if you get quiet. When you get beyond, you just turn my head with all the right compliments and you make me feel like I was seen. You will, if you get quiet, you will get a sense. Is this somebody who's going to deliver something that I need to have? Even if it's not what they're selling you. The second thing is don't base everything on the internet because the internet is the world's greatest lie. Um, in your research, and I'm about due diligence, and I had a due diligence expert on last week as my guest who has a due diligence company. Um, uh, but talk to real people about their experiences. Don't just, you know, anybody can write anything. And, and I've seen some pretty underhanded, nasty things go on where people will give bad reviews to other people that do the same thing that they do and blah, 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 and all that stuff. So be careful what you call due diligence when you say due, due, due diligence. The best due diligence is talking to real people that had real experiences of success with that person. So I would throw that out as well. Um, what do you think makes it so easy to lie in our society today? Uh, a few things. I mean, I think number one, you know, a lot of people don't do fact checking. And I think especially in sort of this age of loose connections, you know, with, you know, Facebook friends and such, such on, you know, like, oh, yeah, no, I'm friends with Kanye West. You know, we go way back. I, I can call him up. And then all of a sudden, you know, you'll believe that. Uh, you know, maybe he actually has Kanye's phone number or whatever. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that connection is as valuable as they're either selling it or you're interpreting it to be. Uh, secondly, I think the press is one of the biggest reasons for why it's so easy to get away with shenanigans. Uh, realistically, what I think a lot of people don't understand is that the press is very illegitimate. You know, you... So I guess uh, a really good example is around the beginning of January when there was the billion dollar Powerball. Uh, there was this pseudo celebrity named Eric Bragg who was really big in skateboarding and he pretty much photoshopped a winning ticket and said, hey guys, I won the billion dollars. And then every news source picked it up. They're like, Here's the winner. Here's all this information. You know, there was stuff everywhere. And what ended up happening was Powerball, you know, like a couple days later was like, uh, just kidding. He's not the winner. That was a fake ticket. And then he even came out and he's like, uh, yeah, you got me. I'm just trolling the Internet. So, you know, this this might be an example of more of a troll. But I think a lot of instances, you know, it's pretty easy if you know the right people to get an article about you in the New York Times or an entrepreneur magazine or Mashable or TechCrunch or whatever. So a lot of people look at these and they view that as an instance of legitimacy. You know, if you're covered in TechCrunch, you're a real entrepreneur. But that's, that's not the case because anyone with $5,000 and a decent PR agent can get in there as well. Uh, and I think realistically, people just need to not believe press or sort of tangential sources as much as we do today. Well, and you bring up a very interesting thing, and you actually bring up a pet peeve of mine. Um, congratulations. Um, which is that, you know, a lot of media these days, um, a lot of media these days is bought and sold media. Mm -hmm. And I want you to put your hand on whatever you consider a sacred text, cross your heart and tell my audience, did you pay to be on my show? Uh, no. I, because nobody pays to be on my show. Because that's not how this rolls. 
and there are so many people that are on so many shows and they are only on shows because they paid to be there. Mm -hmm. And then I've been recently interviewed. I've been invited to go speak at Harvard and say, I spoke at Harvard, 5,000 bucks. Really? If I'm going to speak at Harvard, it's because Harvard calls me and wants me at Harvard. Mm-hmm. But so there's a lot of that going on, and it's like everything's for everything is for sale. Now the other problem is that with the internet and with the accessibility of information, and with the um, you know the world as where it is this time, kids figure out at a young age that they're they're, they're not being told the truth in public education on a regular basis. Yeah. They're being presented things that are subjective as if they're objective. They are not being told whole truths. They're not being presented things. Um, I used to be on CBS radio, and I actually did a whole show on how the state of Texas got got um, its school books for just the state of Texas, and they got to rewrite history the way Texas wanted it because they had enough money to pay Houghton Mifflin to produce those books for their educational tax. How sad is that? Yeah, it's very true. Um, I mean, I think even especially one of the biggest problems is that, as you mentioned, a lot of stuff is prevented as objective when it's really very subjective. So I guess the, the biggest example is with history and art history and subjects sort of in that sense, you know, they're very much social sciences. There's nothing very set in stone about them. And, for example, I guess my brother, who's a senior at Claremont McKenna this year, actually just did his senior thesis on how uh, the gem trade influenced the age of imperialism. And so he went all into what drove countries to go take over countries in Africa and India and abroad. Uh, And it was realistically, a lot of these driving forces were these very large uh, very wealthy families that owned huge diamond and gold companies. And, you know, when you read about imperialism, they sell you the monologue that, you know, it's a lot about glory. And obviously people don't necessarily look at imperialism with a happy light. But there's a lot of stories underneath what people are selling. And I think if you don't really understand those monologues, it's not going to be a very correct narrative. And there is the music. We're coming up uh, to our last segment right after the break. The door deal. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Alicia Isaacs Howes. And I'm Catherine Glass. And we're the Psychic Angel Channelers. You can find us every week here on Ohm Times Radio at Angel Talk Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hey, ladies, do you want to have that good hair day feeling all the time? Gentlemen, would you want your special someone to have that glow, letting you know she's feeling completely satisfied? This feeling and that glow can be yours by embracing your sexual power. So join me, Rachel Kenley, award-winning romance author, on The O-Spot. The O-Spot will guide you to that peak with guest interviews, book discussions, and conversations on the thrills of sexual empowerment. Put the zing back in your life. Come up and see me sometime on The O-Spot, live on Hump Day at 10 p.m. Eastern. Feed your soul. 
with Waves of Consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show, where we challenge everything and everyone. Today we have with us uh, a young entrepreneur. I'm kind of, I keep on emphasizing that, George. I hope you don't mind. No worries, no worries. Um, George is a startup founder, investor, and advisor. He's currently one of the co-founders of Everpedia, the Wikipedia built for the modern internet. I feel like I should be shooting a commercial for you when I say that. <laughs> um, and uh, you can read much more about him uh, at everpedia.com backslash georgebl73 or come to facebook.com backslash mydrkevin. Make sure you like the page because I'm a likable guy and uh, – you can connect right over or leave comments for George. George, this is the what a load of crap segment where you Sounds get to good. kind of go off on any kind of load of crap that you think. I'm going to give you about eight minutes um, or so to do your load of crap, and then I'll be wrapping up the show. So I do have a question. Okay. What was the biggest lie you ever told, George? Oof. Um... Huh. I don't know. I, I try not to uh, make any real big lies. Uh, hmm. Nothing really pops to mind. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess one of, one of the things I really emphasize is if you can't follow through on what you're doing and if you lose your legitimacy, you're dead in entrepreneurship. Um, because especially when you're starting out, you're going to have very little to back up what you're saying and what you're doing, so it's entirely reliant on everyone believing you 100%. Um, so I'm very big on always always staying clear and open with people. Um, yeah. Okay. One of the things that definitely, um, when I teach in entrepreneurialism or, am I, or if I'm working with somebody as a, uh, as a catalyst or mentor is – the old under promise over deliver. Very, very true. Those are those are words I like to use a lot as well. You know, the thing I want to keep, I want you and other people to keep in mind, and then I'm going to get to your load of crap. Is mm -hmm. um, I have often through the years said to my clients because I, again, I have a very, I have a very variety, I have a variety of clients in my practice, from business to personal to ADD to medical intuitive. Um, but there are times when I have to look at them and go, I'm just trying to figure out whether you're lying to me directly or you're lying to yourself so you can tell it to me like it's truth. Mm. Um, and the people that we lie to on the most regular basis, more often than not, is ourselves. And when you have the awareness to not to really work at not doing that, then you don't ever have to worry that you're lying to anyone else. Because I see people lie, and they really believe it's truth. So what's your load of crap, George? Uh, so I guess one thing I'll, I'll sort of call out is that I feel like too many people believe that entrepreneurship is the key to, success, or the key to happiness. And I think especially jumping into tech entrepreneurship and things like that, most people really only see the publicity of, you know, these movies, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, and press and overall, they see all the good side. But I think most people don't understand that number one, that's only like 5% of the actual journey. And the other 90 to 95% of it really ends up being like, holy cow, how can I actually get results? So that way this doesn't completely implode. Um, and that's really stressful. It's, it's awful, uh, especially if you have to do a lot of fundraising for an early stage company. That's what everybody says is, you know, the worst part because you pretty much have to talk to a hundred people to get one person to actually give you money. And you have to deal with that sort of rejection consistently. And you have to know the line of when they're right and you're wrong and when you're right and you just need to stick to your guns. Uh, and that's hard. So I think that's that's definitely underplayed in modern media, but I think even more so when you go to entrepreneurial events and you talk to everybody and you're like, hey, how are you doing? 
everyone's always going to be like, we're doing great. You know, we, we just did this, this, and this. We're all so happy. We're all so content with our lives now that we left corporate world. Um, and I, I want to call that out because, so number one, entrepreneurs are twice as likely to suffer from mental illness. Uh, you know, whether that's causation or correlation, I guess, is up to dispute. But I do think overall, um, entrepreneurs, from my experience, a lot of people sort of stomach this depression uh, in a lot of cases because they're going through a hard time. You know, it's especially early on. It, it's not fun as shit. Uh, it's, uh, it's nice uh, when you succeed. But until then, it's very, very stressful. Um, and I think too many people are afraid to admit that because that's just an admittance that you're struggling. Um, and I think realistically, a lot of people just need to acknowledge that entrepreneurship is hard. It is a struggle at first. Um, and that can can be depressing. Um, and then also a lot of people should acknowledge that, you know, maybe that sort of stress and struggle isn't for them. Well, and I think that that's, you know, I mean, some people are forced into entrepreneurialism. There was a... a faculty a person uh, on the faculty of the place I was teaching mm. and he was the first one I ever heard say this and he always goes um, that the definition of a coach is somebody who just lost their job and hasn't got a new one yet mm -hmm. and coaches are for the most part you know entrepreneurs uh, and I'm not gonna say that's true for all and I've used the word coach actually I used it long before anybody else did as that you know you gave people tools and helped them develop skill sets and so that was other than counseling counseling was a different thing but some people are forced into entrepreneurialism some people you know like there's always there was a time when hey the hottest thing to be was a stockbroker the hottest thing to be was a tech whiz yeah uh, you know the you know the hottest thing was to be you know whatever the real secret is being yourself finding Very passion true. and Very true. If your passion is as a bean counter and it makes you happy to count beans, then go count beans. I mean, yep. you know, that's an equally valuable and important thing. So it, yeah. sounds, it sounds like you have your beans in order. What is you, – you got two minutes to answer this question for me. Okay. I have to ask. So what the hell is Everpedia? Okay. So, so pretty much what a lot of people don't understand is that Wikipedia censors a lot of information. So number one, there's only 5 million pages on Wikipedia. So they're saying of the entire human knowledge, only 5 million things are worth knowing. Um, this gets skewed a lot. So, you know, a lot of very famous and influential people don't get pages because Wikipedia has a very small editor base that gets to make a lot of leeway with their quote-unquote legitimacy rule. So, for example, uh, my co-founder, Mahfoud Mohadam, uh, was one of the founders of Rap Genius, which is you know, now a billion-dollar company. It's one of the top thousand websites in the uh, world. Huge, huge company. All major rappers have verified accounts. Hillary Clinton edits all of her speeches on there. And Wikipedia says, has said seven times that he's not legitimate enough to have a page. Um, the members of the chain smokers don't have pages. Uh, most reality TV stars don't have pages. Overall, there's a lot of big disparities of pretty much Wikipedia telling people some, that they're not allowed to learn about something. So I guess Everpedia is a reaction to that, and we go on a very broad scope and we say, okay, um, all information has a consumer. You know, someone wants to learn about you, someone wants to learn about me, someone wants to learn about you know, your radio show or my company, etc. They should be able to. Um, so we compile all information. As long as you cite it, we have no qualms with it. And we also open up more citations. So Wikipedia only lets you use, like, say, the New York Times or Entrepreneur Magazine or big publications. But as we discussed earlier, those are open to as much bias as a WordPress blog or someone's YouTube channel. So realistically, as long as you put your information on there in a third-person, unbiased manner... We are totally chill with anyone or everything having a page. Now, is there a cost to being on an Everpedia? Zero. You know, anyone can sign up and make a page. We also have a much easier user interface. Uh, also, with Wikipedia, you actually have to code in pages. They have this coding language called Wiki Markup that you have to learn if you want to post a page about yourself. Um, 
Whereas with Everpedia, it's a simple text editor, you know, just sign in, you can do login with Facebook, and within minutes, you can just be typing in your page. So, well, I'm going to check it out because, oh my, it was four, five, six years ago, but somebody that worked for me submitted me to be into Wikipedia, um, and they rejected me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and at that point, I just, I mean, I laughed at it, but I thought, I've got five books out on the market. I've yeah. won awards. Um, I've, you know, I mean, I, I have, I, I have very documentable reasons why people would be looking for me. Very true. And Wikipedia, for whatever reason, didn't make it. And so it didn't hurt my feelings, but it, but at that point, it made me question, like, okay, well, who, how is this being skewed? Very, very true. Yeah, and what's what makes it uh, even worse is, um, you no, know, I have a lot of friends that have Wikipedia pages that really, realistically shouldn't. Um, you know, they haven't really done much with their lives, but because they're friends with some of the Wikipedia editors, they can get pages. Um, so there is, there's a lot of bias with what information goes on there. And overall, you know, we just sort of said, you know, this bias shouldn't be there. You know, who are they to say what is and is not legitimate information? Well, great. Well, thank you for coming on, George. I know the music's going to be starting almost any minute now. This is George Beale. You can find out more about him at everpedia.com uh, backslash George Beal 73. Uh, and uh, George, keep on, keep, keep on being an inspiration and a motivation to the 20-somethings. Well, there we go. Thank you for having me. Have a good day. You too.